can you use reclaimed water to irrigate a vegetable garden in Florida? The official answer might surprise you, and so might mine. In this video, we'll walk through the rules, what the science shows, and then I'll show you exactly how I'm using reclaimed water with a drip irrigation setup in my vegetable garden. Let's get into it. Here in Florida, it's very common for reclaimed water to be routed to houses for the purposes of lawn irrigation and ornamentals irrigation. Reclaimed water can be easily identified by the piping or the valve box cover being a purple color. It's also commonly marked with a sign that says non-potable water. So what is reclaimed water? Reclaimed water is wastewater that's been collected from homes, businesses, and even industries, including everything from showers and dishwashers to toilets. But don't worry, it goes through multiple levels of treatment before it's reused for irrigation. Here's a simplified breakdown of the process. The primary treatment removes solids and sludges through settling. The secondary treatment uses beneficial bacteria to break down organic matter. The tertiary treatment adds filtration and disinfection, typically with chlorine or UV light, to eliminate most pathogens. In Florida, many systems go one step further with nutrient removal to remove nitrogen and phosphorus from the water to protect our waterways. Although reclaimed water is treated to high standards, it is not drinking water quality. Here's an important distinction. Reclaimed water routed to residential neighborhoods is considered a public access area and is treated even higher than some non-public access areas like a sod farm, for example. That's because in public access areas, there's a much higher chance that people or pets will come into contact with that water, so the standards are stricter. Again, it's not drinking water quality, but it's treated to a pretty high standard. Now on to the big question. Can you use reclaimed water to irrigate edible crops? According to the Florida Department of Environmental Protections, you cannot use reclaimed water in such a way that the water comes in contact with the edible portion of the crop, unless it is thermally processed before eating. That means cooked before consuming. According to the Florida State Code, you may also use drip or subsurface irrigation of reclaimed water on crops that will not be thermally processed before consuming. Even with high treatment standards, reclaimed water can still contain trace amounts of things like salt, nutrients, and pharmaceuticals. While it's considered safe for landscape irrigation, it is not intended for direct contact with food crops. That's why UFIFS and the state recommend keeping it off vegetables, especially if you're irrigating from above like a sprinkler. Let me say this clearly. I know the official guidance, but I've done research in my particular county and am well aware of the state code regarding restrictions of using reclaimed water on edible crops in Florida, and I have chosen to do a drip irrigation system on my vegetable garden here in Florida. And right now, I'm going to walk you through that system in case you're interested in doing the same thing. Of course, I wash all of my produce thoroughly before consuming, and I caution you to look at your local water reports prior to doing the same in your own vegetable garden. Now let's get into the walkthrough of my system. I have just finished setting up this brand new valve system from Orbit. I want to show you how it looks. I'm super pumped about it. Now I purchased these pre-assembled manifolds from Orbit, which are really cool. You just have to hand tighten them. So if ever a valve fails in your system, you can simply unscrew it and replace the valve. I have six valves, four of them are for lawn and two of them are for my vegetable gardens. Now this is reclaimed water which I have routed to the house. I live here in central Florida. It's very common to have reclaimed water routed to your house for lawn irrigation. This right here is the Orbit valve box base. This valve box base really helps with making sure that this box is not resting directly on your pipes. So there's cutouts in the valve box base where the pipes go and then this standard size valve box fits on top of that base really nicely. There's mouse hole covers right here so you don't get any dirt falling into your valve area and I've filled the bottom with gravel. Now this is my Orbit Beehive programmer and you can see here this is where you would connect all of the different valves and your ground wire as well. It's capable of holding up to eight different valves although I only have six connected right now. And this Orbit Beehive is controlled with an app on my phone. Now what I've done is trench the line and the PVCs from this area right here where the valves are all the way through this area to the side of these Song of India plants 
And then for my new raised bed, the most recent one I did goes all the way across the yard. <laughs> Excuse the mess, I have little kids. Into this new raised bed that I haven't finished setting up yet. I just capped off the line right there so that I could do that after I fill it up. And then you follow this line. This is where I trenched the PVC. Turn over here. And I have done some elbows and tees. I have done some elbows and tees to bring that supply line up to the raised bed right there. Now, because my supply line is PVC, that's why I'm using PVC all the way up here. Reclaim water, the code requires a purple PVC, so I picked that up at my local Site One supply store, and I used a PVC shutoff valve. Right here is my head assembly. You can see this is a PVC and male hose thread adapter. This right here is the backflow preventer. This is the 25 PSI pressure regulator, and this is the adapter that goes from a female hose thread to half inch poly tubing. That half inch poly tubing runs the entire length of my raised bed on the back side and is secured by stabilizer stakes. Now all along the raised bed, you can see how I have connected the emitter line using a barbed connector, six, six inch spacing emitter line to a goof plug with a quarter inch stabilizer stake. I've done this probably spaced every like six to eight inches all down the raised bed. I also want to point out that this emitter line is capable of still working if buried. So I could cover them up with mulch to protect them from the UV light if I wanted to, or just to make it more discreet and it would still operate normally. This raised bed is like 21 feet long. And so I did not want to bring a button dripper all the way out to every single plant in the entire raised bed that would have been a whole lot more work. That's it for today's video. I hope this was informative about reclaimed water usage in vegetable gardens in Florida. If you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button, give me a like below, and I'll see you guys next time.